Are you a high school baseball pitcher that's nervous about how your arm's going to hold up when you get back into not only throwing but pitching in games? I want to talk today about why it is crucial that as part of the rehab process, we make sure that any pitcher we work with is confident in their arm, both physically and mentally, to allow for optimal performance on the field. How do I know this? My name is Dr. Jeff Lewis. I'm the owner and physical therapist of Lewis Physical Therapy and Sports Rehab in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, where I have helped countless baseball pitchers throw harder, throw pain-free, and get stronger after an arm injury. After any type of injury for a pitch, for an arm injury for a pitcher, no matter how small, whether it is something as a low-grade muscle strain, some bicep tendinopathy, or something as much more severe as a ulnar nerve transposition, Tommy John, labrum, labrum repair, much more significant things like that. The importance of certain qualities throughout rehab does not change. Does, does not change. It's the same, it's just varied based on the timeline. A lot of attention gets placed into the physical importance of rehab, which we know. After surgery, after any injury, you lose motion, things get weak. Part of that, a big part of that rehab is just reconditioning your arm and your body to get you back to where you were before injury. The other side of the rehab process that is not talked about a lot is the mental process. Now, there are certainly times where if there needs to be other referrals out to more of a mental, like, mental performance provider or whatnot, there's absolutely cases for that. I'm just more so speaking from my experience of what I see guys go through in the rehab process from a day-to-day -day standpoint. A lot of the young guys that I see, 14, 15, 16 year olds that come in here with an arm injury, that's the first time that they've been hurt and had to not play baseball for at, for at minimum probably two months at a time. Up until then, they've been playing baseball pretty much for lack of better library term and the sports specialization thing, that's a conversation for a different day, but they've been playing pretty consistently year round for probably as long as they can, for as long as they can remember. So for them to have to accept man, I'm hurt and I, and I can't play baseball right now, especially if it's in the middle of their season, because that's when usually this, or at the beginning of the season, because that's when usually when this stuff happens. It's a big blow at a lot of times. And it can be scary for guys to realize, okay, well, I'm not gonna be playing for a little bit. Like, am I gonna be able to get, am I gonna be able to get back? And a lot of my job at that times is more so of guiding them throughout that process and making sure they're in a good spot. But the mental side of things is something that I've seen and the more I practice and the more I've worked with a lot of baseball pitchers, especially, has become a big part of something I should be mindful of in the rehab process. And it's not just a matter of like, hey, we don't care about that until they're getting ready to get back on the mound. No, that is from the entire process through. Tommy John, for example, it is really tough for guys to come to terms that they're looking down, they're looking down a 12-month rehab at minimum, usually more as we've started as we started to see, but having to come to accept they're not gonna be playing baseball for a minimum of 12 months. That is a really, really hard thing for guys, for guys to come to terms with. So we're probably from the get-go, from day one after surgery, we're trying to make sure that we're keeping them mentally sharp and bought into the, pro bought into the process. Now, if we just break it down from phase by phase of any rehab, that first part of rehab is getting them out of pain, just getting things to calm down more than anything. And it can be really scary for guys when they wake up in pain after their injury for a couple days, because it's all they're thinking about is, is this ever gonna get better? Am I ever gonna get back? Am I ever gonna get back to playing, pitching? And that's where my experience with these injuries comes into play with guys, but there's that. We wanna build confidence of, hey, listen, this will get better. And then the next part of that is, hey, we now need to get you ready to throw more than anything. And that's a big part of that, of getting baseline range of motion back, baseline strength, medicine ball, plyometric work, to me, the medicine and plyometric, medicine and plyometric work, it's important because one, we need to do it from a physical standpoint to physically prepare the arm and their body for the higher effort ballistic throwing that's coming up. But the other side of it is the med ball and plyo ball work that they're gonna be doing leading up to throwing, in my opinion, it should be harder than that first day of throwing. The first day of throwing should feel easy for them. More than they, I should almost have to pull back on them continuing to throw. And I tell guys all the time too, we know that mentally, like, I want to get you to the point where, say we're going to be throwing three weeks, say we're throwing three weeks from today, we're planning to with a guy. I should almost have to, like, take the ball out of their hand. They should almost be begging me to start throwing a week before that. Because that then tells me, hey, listen, they're feeling good. They're feeling like a ball player again. They are ready to get the ball back in their hand. Now, we obviously need 
to make sure they are physically ready. But we're not going to do this picture any good if we, hey, we do our shoulder scores, we do all this stuff, med ball, plyo ball, everything, and they're physically good. But if they're just, if they're hesitant in getting out there and throwing again, that's what the last thing we want to do is force that process. Because then at that point, we just might be rushing, if, if we like mentally are rushing them into it, there's a lot more, a lot more likelihood of things going wrong than things going right from that standpoint. And that's a lot of times where I sit down and have an honest conversation with guys of being like, hey, listen, tell me what you feel like you need to do to get back to get back to throwing. And that's why I always say rehab is a two-way street. It's not just me telling a guy, hey, do X, Y, Z, no questions asked, go. It needs to be this open chain of communication that I talk about with, with all of our pitchers more than anything because they are – their feedback is just as if not more important than my feedback during that during that process. And then we really continue to do that throughout the entire throughout the entire time. A guy starts throwing. They are gradually building up on flat ground. Same thing. If we're getting to the point where they're getting ready to throw off a mound in a week and they still are not comfortable ripping it on flat ground to 60 feet, again, mentally versus physically, like there's we gotta make sure we're looking at stuff. The last thing we want to do is progress a guy when they to us might be ready, but only physically versus mentally. And that's the same thing for when we get them on the mound, when we get them into lives, and especially when we get them back into games. When a guy's getting ready to go back into games, we need to make sure that they are going out there knowing, I'm gonna get these guys out, I'm gonna go out there, and I'm gonna dominate. And now again, that first, those first couple games back, there's always a learning curve for guys. It's not uncommon for guys to get knocked around. Velo's maybe not right there right away. McCants are still a work in progress. But it should be comfortable enough where they feel comfortable going out there, stepping on the mound, and going and showing their stuff. So the main takeaways from this are we need to make sure, one, are we physically preparing them appropriately to give them the mental confidence in their arm and their body. And then the other side of it is just having open communication with guys to see, hey, listen, I, you know, I consider myself to know a lot about baseball rehab and getting pitchers back to playing. But every pitcher is different. And so we want to make sure we're talking to them, hey, is there any certain thing in particular that you feel you need to do or you want to do rather to help get you get you to feel more ready to get back out onto that? And honestly, most guys have never been asked that. And it just helps give them a little bit more, puts them in the driver's seat of their process because they need to be in the driver's seat. It needs to be both parties in the driver's seat. So I, those are really the two biggest approaches I've seen on how we get a guy to mentally prepare for any big transition in their rehab process, but really just going from point eight to beginning of rehab right after injury or after surgery to getting them back to pitching in games consistently. So if you're a baseball player, especially a pitcher that, again, is just not sure how you need to build confidence in your arm to get ready to back to get ready to get back to games, go ahead and leave a comment below with any questions. Or if you want more help individually to see what we can do to help you move along that process a little bit better, text the number below and we'll get back to you.